Well, one of the uh, important things about human evolution that Artipithecus informs us about is not only the foot and the pelvis and the back and these other parts, but in particular the hand. And the hands of chimpanzees and humans are quite distinct. Chimps feed on ripe fruit. To get to it, they often climb large trees. Up in the branches, they often suspend themselves, using their long forelimbs and stiffened wrist joints. Down on the ground, those same stiffened wrists act like shock absorbers at the base of their long hands. There, they practice a peculiar form of locomotion called knuckle walking. Most scientists predicted that the deeper the fossil record went, the more chimpanzee-like our ancestors would be. If humans had descended from a chimp-like ancestor, there ought to be traces of this knuckle-walking anatomy in the structure of Artie's fossilized hand bones. But there aren't any. It was quite obvious the minute we found the major elements of the Artipithecus hand that it was not a knuckle walker. The metacarpals, the long bones that you see here, are quite short. And if we rotate that a little bit and we look at the surface of the top of the metacarpal, the elements that we would expect to find in a knuckle walker are not present. So these bones are short, and the whole head morphology is completely different. And it wasn't until we'd extracted the hand bones and studied the hand bones that we came to realize that this was not the hand of an ape. This is compelling evidence that our common ancestor with chimpanzees did not walk on its knuckles. This was a completely new animal. It took years as a consequence to look at all the details of things like the wrist bone to figure it all out because we've never seen anything like this before. Artipithecus did not evolve from an ancient chimpanzee. This conclusion, based on new fossil evidence, has overturned a concept so widespread that many people just assume that it was true. From the beginning, we've used chimpanzees and gorillas as our stand-ins, if you will, for the last common ancestor. We can't do that anymore. Ever since Darwin, we've bought into the idea that humans evolved from ancient, chimp-like creatures. That's because modern chimps seem to share a lot of anatomy and behavior with we humans. So the idea that we evolved from something like chimps seems to make sense. But now, the discovery of Artipithecus shows that this idea is totally and completely wrong. It's an early transitional bipedal form with small canines, a completely unique and unexpected primate that no one could have known until we found the skeleton at Aramis. Artie's skeleton sheds new light on how humans evolved. But what influenced and shaped that evolution? The Middle Awash investigators were not finished making discoveries the team would go on to also test another fundamental assumption our about our origins. Scientists had long predicted that early hominids evolved bipedality on Africa's open savannas. But without fossil evidence, this hypothesis has been impossible to test. Was Artie's world really a savanna, or was it something else? Now, the most extensive investigation of plant and animal fossils in the history of paleoanthropology would answer this question in a very unexpected way. The search for fossils at Aramis is physically demanding and often dangerous work. 
patience and determination make all the difference. Time is not really a limit for us. The only thing that we have to limit is the amount, the time that we have to rest, the time that we have to sleep, and that's the only thing. And time does add up. The Middle Awash researchers have spent over a decade examining and reconstructing Artie's partial skeleton. During the same period, a parallel effort has been underway. An exhaustive global study that would challenge assumptions about how and where early hominids arose. The team set out to investigate the community of plants and animals that lived in Artie's ancient world at Aramis. We can't see Artipithecus today. We can only see it through its skeletal remains. But we can see its world. We can reconstruct its world. We can understand its world through using this very, very rich paleontological record. For nearly a century, it's been assumed that the earliest hominids lived and evolved in a savanna grassland. The Aramis site gave the Middle Awash scientists a unique chance to test that hypothesis with hard evidence. The scientists continued to return to the harsh Ethiopian desert year after year, even after the arty skeleton was found. Their objective was to recover as many fossils as they could of the plants and animals who lived with Artie. But the fossils at Aramis are mixed with rocks and other debris that are virtually the same color. And so are the snakes. We've had dozens of instances in which our fossil collectors have come literally eyeball to eyeball with these highly venomous snakes. This is just one of the dangers, one of many dangers of working in a remote area like this. Through this systematic search at Aramis, thousands of fossils have been recovered. And each year, the seasonal rains expose even more fossils, including other primates. Look at this. That's an immature monkey whose jaw dropped to the ground here 4.4 million years ago. And it's a, a baby monkey. The dentition will go right together just like that. One of the reasons people are interested in monkeys is that they are the other primate that you find at the hominid sites. So they can tell you a bit about the paleo environment, what was going on at the time. The monkeys can tell us quite a bit. Were they arboreal monkeys? Were they terrestrial? Many remains of arboreal monkeys were found at Aramis, helping to make the case that this was an environment filled with trees. The scientists also combed the sediments for fragments of mouse-sized creatures called micromammals. Back at camp, excavated chunks of sediment are dissolved into thick mud and then run through sieves with submillimeter sized mesh. As water runs through the mix, fragments of bones and teeth are separated. Later on, they'll be sorted and identified in the lab. Reconstructing Artie's ecology will eventually involve over 40 scientists from 16 countries representing 30 different institutions from around the world. They've even studied the ancient soils she walked on and profiled the chemical composition of her teeth to learn about her habitat and diet. For more than 10 years, the field team has collected fossils from the same sediments that also buried Artie at Aramis. At Ethiopia's National Museum, experts sorted, analyzed, and cataloged thousands of remnants from the now vanished world of Artipithecus. A porcupine, a mongoose, a bunch of birds, all kinds of monkeys, pigs, 